In section 10.2, we're going to take everything that we've learned from 10.1 about the theory behind hypothesis testing and the errors and how to write conclusions and make decisions, and we're going to apply it to our first real life hypothesis test. Let's first remind ourselves of a few different things. So first off, statistical significance. What does that mean when we ask if something is statistically significant or not? It means that the observed results from a random sample are very unlikely due to chance if the null hypothesis were true. So we reject the null hypothesis. So statistically significant means you want to reject the null hypothesis. That's going to come back a little bit later. Why is that the case? Well, because we assume the null hypothesis is true. So it's only significant to us if we're able to reject it. Now let's remind ourselves of the example with the rigged die. So we knew that the student um, Steve, the student's data was rigged because they're in the classical method right here would be because the mean is this, the standard deviation, um, the mean is 2, standard deviation is 1.29, and therefore Steve's z-score is 7.746. So we know that Steve is far away from the rest of the group, right, and the mean. Therefore, we think that the die is loaded. In other words, his z-score is well past the threshold for highly unusual. Okay. So highly unusual, highly unlikely, um, means that the sample statistic is too many standard deviations from the parameter assumed in the null hypothesis. So in other words, Steve's st statistic of 12 was too far away from the mean of 2 to happen by chance because his z-score was 7.746. And that's really far away by random chance. So it's too many standard deviations. In other words, z-score, t-score is too high. All right, then there's the p-value method. Now the p-value method considers the probability and says, okay, you can reject the null hypothesis. You will get a significant result if your, um, if your probability of getting what you got is so low, right? If the probability of getting what you had is so low, then it's unusual enough to say that I reject the null hypothesis. So for example, here, um, the probability of getting Steve what Steve obtained was found, if you remember, binome PDF 12 comma 16 comma 12, which was approximately 0, 0.0, well, lots of zeros, and then a 459. So very, 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 very low. And since it's very low, we know that we can reject the null hypothesis. In other words, the probability of getting what Steve got is way beyond highly unusual, highly unlikely. So what does highly unlikely mean for these two methods? So for the classical approach, it means that you're too many standard deviations away from the parameter, like I said before. But for the p-value approach, it means the probability of obtaining the sample results by random chance, just by it happening by accident, is too low. Right? If it's very low, then you will reject the null hypothesis. Now, in general, we will use the p-value approach more, as this is the method that computers use and calculators use and so on. Um, that doesn't mean that you don't need to know that um, classical method as well. 